In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through step-by-step -step on how you can set up the Hammer A3 line of jointer planer combo machines. Hey everybody, welcome back, I'm Jason Bent, and I just wanna make it very clear before the video starts that this is a very specific video that is geared mainly towards anybody who is maybe interested in buying one of the Hammer jointer planer combo machines, has already purchased one and is waiting on it to be delivered, or has just recently got it delivered and you're looking for something to help you with the assembly process. It is a long video and it is very detailed on how to go about from the time you get your machine to removing it from the crate, removing it from the pallet. The reason that I'm doing it is because when I got my other machine, I wished that there would have been something out there for this purpose. Those of you that are interested in this information, uh, I really hope that you enjoy it. So this is what it's gonna look like when it arrives uh, from the freight carrier. Uh, they were nice enough to uh, download it out of the truck, bring it into my shop. So clearly the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and remove all this plastic wrap. To do that, I'm just taking a, uh, a blade and I'm just gonna remove all this. So I'm gonna get all this removed and then uh, I'll start talking about what we're gonna do for the frame. I've got all the plastic removed and before I get too far past this point, cause I, I really feel like I need to mention this, is I had them place this in my shop in this orientation because towards the camera where I'm pointing right now, I have a, a large uh, open area and the machine is gonna come off of this crate this way and you're gonna end up building some sort of ramp and using that pallet jack, which I'll show here in a little bit. So I'm mentioning this now because I would hate to get all the way to that point and then mention it. Um, so just something to think about. I actually backed mine almost all the way to the garage door. I've got about a foot of space just to kind of give me some area to work on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to go ahead and start taking off these top pieces uh, from the crate. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because the next thing that I wanna do is actually start unwrapping the machine. So I gotta get all of this stuff out of the way. And these are created very well. Um, it's all screwed together there at the facility. And so to get everything apart, I'm just gonna use this impact. And it's nice too, because they use really nice uh, screws. So uh, on the last one, I actually kept all the screws and I'll definitely be keeping all the screws on this one as well. Something I wanna mention is, you know, try not to uh, you know, just trash this wood, because some of this wood I'm actually gonna be using to create the ramp to get it off of the pallet. So once I have the majority of the screws uh, all taken out of the framing, they still do use uh, like a single nail in each portion. So there's a nail here, a nail here, a nail on all the corners. And so either a dead blow mallet or a hammer or something like that will just start popping those things off. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And then as you go along, you'll realize that you missed a screw somewhere. So make sure you keep your impact readily available. Okay, so once we've got um, all the wood and everything, and everything's now exposed, you're, you'll see that all of the additional accessories or whatever extra stuff that you may have ordered to go along with your machine is all going to be wrapped on the top of the machine. So the next step, obviously, is we're gonna go ahead and get all of this stuff off so it's just the jointer planer combo machine. And when you're doing this, you wanna be a little bit careful because you, know, you don't wanna cut through something you're not supposed to cut through, so. Which for the most part, you know, it's all in boxes anyways. So the next step is to get this stuff off and then we will go from there. And switch over to a sharper blade here. So you have the outer saran wrap layer and then you have this inner layer that comes from the factory.
All right, so now that everything is off of that, this is where I want to be, make sure I'm you know, really careful about cutting through this because I don't want to cut anything that's underneath here. So if you just start at one end, get your knife in there and then just run it down with the blade facing upward. You just don't really need to worry about it too much. So we're gonna peel this off. And once you get that done, it's gonna expose the manual, the instructions, uh, some of the tools that you're gonna need, some of the handles and such. And so we're basically just gonna start taking this stuff off and putting it off to the side. So what I'm trying to do is basically just get all of this stuff to this back side of the machine where it's gonna be out of the way. Down on the bottom of the pallet, you're also gonna have some more additional uh, you know, tools, accessories, anything you're gonna need or that may, you may have ordered. Uh, so just make sure that you look around, you get that stuff off. Some of the items and accessories might actually be uh, bolted down and screwed down like this right here. Um, so we'll go ahead and get all of those off here shortly. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fence. That's up. I brought you in real close. Just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, these, some of these are gonna be uh, connected to the pallet. We've got a screw here, we've probably got another screw on the other side. And then I also wanted to point out these. So these are the anchors for the pallet and you have to remove these in order to get this off. So while I'm down here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove each one of these. They're held down by three screws and those will come off as well. Okay, so I've moved the microphone. Hopefully you guys can still hear everything okay. There's a couple different things that I'm gonna do here. And one of them is placing these bolts. And, and to do that, I need to remove this access panel to access. These bolts are gonna go here and here. And the reason they're gonna go there is because they're gonna stick out like this. And that is actually what one of the forks is going to support the weight of this on. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a ledge here by screwing it into the main uh, pallet. And the reason I need that is because it's just a little bit close to the edge and I need something for the wheel to ride on as I'm pulling this thing off. So that's another thing that I'm gonna do. I will probably leave this off until I am completely done moving this because I'm gonna to wanna to take these bolts out. Place this in from the back side. I'm going to spin on this nut. I'm gonna tighten it down. Just make sure that's nice and snug, it's not going anywhere. I'll do the same one to the back and then I'm gonna go ahead and start putting on my additional support over here to help support the pallet wheel. I think this should be enough support. If not, I'll just throw another one out here on the side when it comes to that time. But for right now, I think that's gonna be just enough. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is build a little ramp. And I said earlier that you were gonna end up using some of the materials um, from the pallet to create a ramp, or you could use some of the materials from the pallet. So my pallet jack is mainly gonna be focused on this area here, and that's where the majority of the weight is, so that's how I'm gonna build this ramp. And the way that I'm doing that is I've just got a scrap two by four underneath the bottom. I grabbed just a piece of scrap that I had in the shop that's about an inch thick, and then have a two by four standing up. This is actually gonna get connected to the frame, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So that is gonna be my ledge to accept some of these scrap pieces from the crate. The reason I'm using this is because I'm gonna put three quarter inch plywood over the top. And when I do that, it'll make this about even with the top of this. So I'm gonna have a wheel over here. So I definitely wanna make sure I have some good support. I don't need anything real crazy here because all the weight is gonna be going down directly over the top of it. I'm gonna put this one right here. And it's really, I'm just trying to beef up the main area that all of that weight is gonna be on. And then I'll put this one right here 
like this, and that's a substantial amount of support for what I need to do. You could make the angle even less drastic if you were to um, make these, choose some longer boards, but I think this is gonna work out just fine. I guess we'll find out shortly. All right, so I've got my piece of plywood in place. Just want to see where my other two by four is. This is really just to keep it from shifting. I've got one over here on this side, one over here. Seems to be nice and solid. You could put more, but the weight, I think, is just going to weigh it down. So a uh, very small lip, maybe an eighth of an inch. Nothing that I'll notice on the pallet jack. So next step is to get it off. Okay, I've got my ramp built. Unfortunately, I've got a lot of stuff in the shop, so it's a little bit difficult um, to get good angles just because of how, where everything is. So we added the bolts in the back. That is what uh, is going to rest on the right-hand side fork, and the left-hand side fork will be all the way over here. So I think in a perfect world, um, I would like my ramp to be a little bit wider, but it's just slightly wider than the wheels. So this should work out just fine. And underneath one of the, each one of the wheels, there is actually a two by four dedicated just to that. So I can get this up there. So make sure this is over as far as possible to make sure it's getting enough of the bolts. So as I go ahead and take this down, I'm gonna keep this in the upright position so I can control it coming towards me. At least that's the plan. If I feel anything is not going so great, I'm just gonna go ahead and lower it wherever it's at. So let's give it a shot. Now before I do anything, Just want to get a good feel for it. Make sure that I can control what is happening. So I need to go a little higher. So it's nice because it's actually dragging on the wood. So as I lift this a little bit more, it's clearing. All right, and so now I think I'm good. I'm gonna come down. I've got full control. And then, yeah, it starts to get pretty heavy there. Start turning it. And we're off. Okay, I went ahead and lowered that down, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is clean all this up, get this out of the way, and then get the machine back over here so I can do all the other work that I need to do on it. But that was not nearly as bad. I was actually a little bit nervous, but that was not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So um, you can do it with one person fairly easily, and personally, I, I really think the, the wider pallet jack is, is probably the, the way to go, but um, yeah, go ahead and get this cleaned up. Now I've got everything out of the way and I've put it in a location where I can get to it from both sides. And the next thing, now that we have it off, the hard part is done. Now it's really just getting everything assembled and I'm gonna get my mobile base on here. And then from there, I don't even need the pallet jacks anymore. I can actually move it wherever I need to in the shop fairly easily. So um, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'll probably hold off on that until tomorrow. So real quick, I just kinda wanna talk through uh, some of the struggles that I had with this. I was under the impression that I needed the narrow pallet jack. And so I went and rented a narrow pallet jack. And when I went to go lift it up, because all of the weight was in the front, it basically was just tipping. And it really concerned me. So I reached out to Felder and asked them, you know, hey, narrow pallet jack for the A341. I think I probably need a full size pallet jack. And then they explained to me what you can do is actually lift up the tables, lock them in place, and now you have all of that weight directly over um, the 
narrow pallet jack and it will actually balance everything out. And then you would just have an additional person kind of helping guide it uh, to steer it. So that applies to the A331 and the A341 because the bases are the same. With that being said, I personally would recommend just getting a regular pallet jack and going through the process with the regular pallet jack. It fit great. Do some measurements, but essentially the pallet jack that I have is 27 inches in total width. Each one of the forks is six and a half inches wide, but one fork is on the outside of the machine. The space that you have available to you from that uh, outside edge to the inside edge where that other fork goes is 20 and a quarter inches. So for the fork that's on the outside of the machine, it actually pushes it off about a quarter of an inch and it's fully supported by those two bolts that we put in. And then the other one is as far over to the front of the machine as it can possibly go. Personally, I didn't have to move anything with the tables. I just thought that that was a better solution for me. And as you saw in the video, I was able to get it off by myself and slowly lift it and kind of let it come off of the ramp. As soon as the front wheels on the pallet jack kind of cleared that, it did start to come towards me because it is a lot of weight. So something that you could do to alleviate that problem is make your ramp a lot longer. Mine was about 60 inches total. If you really wanted to, you could probably stretch it out to about the eight foot mark and you would have a very gradual uh, decline. With that being said, you're only dropping off of the platform about six inches or so. Um, so I, I would have absolutely no problems doing the, exactly what I did again um, it worked great, I did it by myself, and um, that is the biggest concern for me when I got the machines, how I'm gonna get those off. And before I return this other narrow pallet jack, I wanna show you what I'm talking about, why it would be perfect if you bought the A326. So this right here is the narrow pallet jack, and I just kinda wanna show you why I was saying this would be excellent for the A326 is uh, this side over here, it would actually be even closer uh, because you'd have those bolts coming out that I uh, installed on the other machine earlier. So it would give me really good balance uh, when I went to go lift this up because right here, this would be slid over a little bit and this supports this machine. A narrow pallet jack would definitely be what I would recommend if you are getting this smaller machine. But if it's the A331 or A341, you can do it with this pallet jack, but they're more difficult to find and I honestly believe that I was able to support the weight better with a standard pallet jack. Okay, so yesterday we got everything off of the pallet, and so now I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, with some of the assembly portions of this. First thing, uh, they send you two of these knobs. These knobs actually screw into these handles. This is how you lift uh, the machine up and down. And the reason I'm doing this right now is because I'm gonna need this here in a second, because we're gonna remove this paper, and then we're gonna remove it off of the planer bed. These are real easy, you just screw them in. You can take a wrench, go back over and tighten it down, but they'll stay pretty tight. So for me, I like to have my handles uh, inward and so you can then push them in and then push them down to lock it. So I'm gonna leave that unlocked for now. We're gonna go ahead and remove this paper. The tape goes all the way under the machine. So you can just reach from the underside Pull that tape. Not really gonna do anything uh, with the table just yet. Uh, again, my big focus right now is to uh, get the paper off and, and really just get everything ready for the assembly. So now we're gonna go ahead and lift this up. It's locked in place. Uh, information about uh, the silent power cutter head. And then you might find some additional trash and stuff in there, so. Man, pretty large. And then same thing applies down here. We're just gonna remove this paper. And if I need to get access, I can come over to this side, pull that paper out, and now we're good. Undo the lock there and lower this down. The last machine I got had, oh, that's cool. So this one actually, won't just slam down. It actually has a nice little assist in it. All right, so that's locked. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start assembling the fence. 
All right, so the first thing that we are going to put on the machine is the rail that goes on the infeed side for the fence. And there's a few different things that we're gonna need. It goes this orientation with this portion facing towards the machine. And this end right here is roughly flush with the machine, um, but it doesn't have to be perfect. However, what does have to be perfect is the top of this needs to be exactly 17 millimeters down from the top edge of this. And I'll talk about that here in just a moment. And then these right here, we're going to put up, matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and put these on right now. All right, so these bolts look like this. And when we're gonna put these in here, I wanna do zoom in just so it can be very clear on how these will go in. So I'm gonna remove the nut. I'm gonna remove this washer here. And now that spacer is gonna go into that hole. Then I'm gonna place the washer and the nut. And I'm not gonna tighten the nut down all the way. I'm gonna leave it loose just like this because I need to slide the fence in here. All right, so I'm gonna share something with you that I hope you guys find helpful. This, I was really having a hard time figuring out exactly how I'm gonna get that spacing. And then I figured out, why don't I just make something using dominoes? And what are dominoes good for? Everything, right? I use these as spacers for so many different applications. That's what I'm gonna do here. So I've got an eight millimeter domino, a five and a four, which gives me the 17 millimeter spacing that I need. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over like this. Now I have a reference that I can push my fence up to and I know that it's 17 millimeters from the edge, no matter what. Once those are on, I can then take the fence and start sliding it down. This goes in just like that. And now I can go ahead and set my spacer. And now that I have my fence on, I know where I can reference it. So as long as I know I'm touching that fence, I can go ahead and clamp down my spacer. I really wanted to share this tip because I was really having a difficult time figuring out exactly how I could go about, which is strange because it's such a simple thing to do, uh, but it was just kind of, I was racking my brain around it when I did my first machine. All right, so now that I've got that right where it needs to be, I can go ahead and start tightening down these bolts in the back. And right now I'm just finger, going finger tight until they don't need to necessarily hold it in place yet, but I don't want to sit here and be cranking down on this for a really long time. Now, as I'm tightening this down, I do want to make sure that I'm watching and that it does stay in contact. And once I get one side nice and tight, I can let go and then just make sure that this other side is where it needs to be. Now, the reason why it's so important that this is exactly 17 millimeters is because this will ensure that your fence slides back and forth very easily. And this is the easiest way that I have found to install one of these. So real quick, I just want to bring you in close to show you what I was talking about. It's not clamped down anymore, so it right, rose up a little bit, but it is touching the rail and that's what you want. So now I know that this is 17 millimeters down from my reference surface being this. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and slide back on this piece right here, and this is what the end of the fence is gonna connect to. And this is just held in by these Allen screws right here, which all of these are gonna come out, and I'll go ahead and show you how to put the fence on. All right, so before I actually mount the fence, I need to go ahead and take off this knob here. And when you take this knob off, there's going to be a metal washer, a plastic washer, and another plastic washer. When I put the fence on, that plastic washer is on the bottom. Fence will go on, these will go on top, and then the knob will be installed. Before I put the fence on, I'm gonna remove these six bolts real quick because I will need to install them 
with the fence. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and get our fence on here. Just set my fence down initially. Go ahead and move my block here on the end, get everything lined up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put these screws back in. There's six total, I'm just trying to get them started here. I'm not tightening them down completely tight just yet. All right, once I got them all on there, I'll go ahead and start tightening these down. I can lock this in place for right now. And remember what I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and put the plastic piece down, metal piece up, tighten this down, and it's now locked in place. If you are somebody that decided to get the digital wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through how that gets installed. On the back side of this wheel, there is a 10 millimeter nut and all you have to do is loosen that nut. Once you get the nut off, you can push the bolt that's back there through. You should be able to hammer that screw down. And then it just comes out and this slides off and you don't need uh, really to keep it because the new one, if you got the other aluminum hand wheel, will actually have one on there. And so this is the aluminum hand wheel that I'm talking about. We'll install the digital gauge on this, but first I need to raise this all the way up. But I'm gonna go ahead and install this. And the way you install it, if you don't drop your bolts and lose everything, is the same way. So I'm gonna put this on here. Place my washer back on. Place my nut back on. Tighten it as much as I can with my fingers. And then I'll go ahead and tighten everything down nice and tight. And once that's tight enough, we can go ahead and raise this bed up so we can install the digital readout. Okay, I've got this raised up all the way and what I'm gonna do now is this is just a plastic cap and what I need to put in there is this. And this is what they call their digital readout. And you'll notice if I turn it, the numbers are changing, right? And so I want to have this on zero. This is not raised all the way up to the top, but I can fine tune it later. What you don't want is to be on this <laughs> and then have to figure out, you have to sit here and like turn it and 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 get it to wherever it needs to go. So we're going to put it in at zero. And after I actually get the machine up and running, I will fine tune this. So I'll basically just take something I know is maybe an inch um, or maybe a little bit uh, less than an inch and plane it down until I hit three quarters of an inch and this will say seven five. And when I measure the board and know that that's uh, three quarters of an inch, I can pop this out and turn this until it says seven five and put it back in. There's other ways that you can do this. This is just the way that is very easy for me and that's the way that I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna leave this like this. To pop this out, you can just take a flathead screwdriver it's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you'll get it out. Once you get it back in there, bam. And like I said, we're close already. So we're going to go ahead and put zero. Make sure that this is lined straight up and down. Over on the far side over here, there is a small hole that I can thread a small nut that comes with this into it to keep it in place. So I'm gonna do that now. So right here on the end of this little Allen wrench is uh, a three millimeter set screw. And like I said, it's gonna go in on this side. I apologize that I'm not able to bring you in to show you, but I think most of you guys probably get how to 
put in a set screw. Once that's nice and tight, I can go ahead and start lowering this down. We're done with this portion, so we don't really need the bed up any longer. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get a spacer underneath so we can start putting on the mobile base. And it is possible to do it by yourself, but it is not, it is not fun. So I definitely would recommend uh, getting somebody else to help you with this part. But if you find yourself in a pinch, it absolutely can be done. And again, you can use uh, some of the material from the crate to prop it up. And usually a two by four is all you really need. And we'll do the front first and then we'll do, we'll do the back first with the wheels and then we'll prop up the front just to put the small little leveling feet. But uh, using some of the scraps that you have works pretty good. Okay, so with the exception of lifting the machine up, <laughs> installing the mobile base is probably one of the easier th things to do. on this whole process. And there's a reason why I still haven't added this back panel and it's because of what you just saw. And that's still having the ability and access to grab this because if you're doing it without this panel off, it does make it a little bit more challenging. So all I'm doing right now is I'm looking to see if I have roughly the same length on both sides, just so it's relatively even. I don't really care if it's perfectly even, but this right here, looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hold this in place. I'm gonna slide on one of my two stops. As you can see right here, these are just some small rings that have a set screw. These are here to assist with the wheels. So I'm gonna go right there and I'm gonna slide this one on, tighten down my set screws. I'm still holding the bar just to make sure that the bar doesn't slide all over the place. And once I get that first one done, I don't really need to hold it so much anymore. Just go ahead and tighten down this set screw and we're good to go. And we'll go over to the other side and do the same thing. Is that one? So after you put the wheels on, I would recommend putting on this bracket next and then assembling the um, bar that actually moves this thing around because now you can use this to tilt this machine up and get the spacers needed underneath it. And I suggest that because it alleviates the need for you to have to try to lift up on the machine more than that one time for the back. If I was trying to lift this up now, it has a tendency to want to slide back because the wheels are on it. And assembling this is really easy. It's just three bolts with washers. Place that on there. Place that one there. And place that one in there. And then you can reach in the back and put the washer and nut on the back side because you can reach in underneath the machine. just three total so we'll go ahead and get all three of these on all right I've got my bolts nice and tight so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, bar together and then we'll bring it back over here we'll lift this thing up we'll get the space underneath and we'll put the leveling feet so the instructions on how to assemble this are actually pretty good uh, it's really just a picture um, but it's really, really quick and really easy to do. So we're just gonna walk through that real quick. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place this bar in here like this, and then slide these plastic sleeves over the top of it. This is the handle. So that's good. We'll go ahead and flip this over like this. So very similar for the wheels uh, as it was on the last assembly. However, on this one, one of the key differences is there's only one 
of these stop collars on each side. So when you slide these on, slide one on one side, one on the other side, make sure that everything lines up, put my spacers with the little set screws, go ahead and tighten this down, make sure to get these nice and tight. Okay, those are nice and tight. Next thing we have to do is place a washer on this Allen bolt, thread the nut on the bottom, get that finger tight. This bolt is actually what goes into that bracket that we just installed. Get a socket on there and just tighten this down. And this is now assembled. And so let's go back over and go ahead and put the leveling feet on the machine. Go ahead and lift up on the machine and kick my spacer in there. And so we do need to add a little bit more height just to get the clearance that we need. So I put a half inch piece of ply underneath the wheels to give me that spacing. And now let's see if we have enough space to slide these under. looks like we still need a little bit more on this end. So let's go ahead and do one more piece here and lift this up and slide that under. And now we should have plenty of clearance that we need without going too high. And that is what we are looking for. Okay, so now we have the clearance that we need. And as you can see here, I can access the machine from the side. I'm basically just going to put this leg through the hole for the support foot. The washer, the nut, tighten that down. Use my wrench to make sure that it's nice and tight. Once it's nice and tight, I can do the same thing on the other side. And as I'm sure that you can imagine, taking this off is the same way as we put it on. I'm just going to lift it up a little bit here, move these spacers out of the way, and then slowly lower the machine back down, get those spacers out of the way, and we're almost done. All right, since we've got everything mobile now, let's go ahead and put this thing where it's gonna live. And this is a 900 pound machine, maybe more, I don't know. It's pretty dang heavy. And it is actually really easy to move around using mobile base that they have. All right. Roughly right here. So once we have it in a rough place, what's really cool about uh, this mobile handle here slides right underneath the machine. I think that looks good where it's at. And if I ever do need to use a 16 inch capacity, I just slide it out a little bit, and be good to go. Two things left to do, to adjust the fence to make sure it stays nice and tight and it doesn't bind like it was earlier. So we'll go ahead and do that, that's on this end. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the plug because these machines do not come with plugs. Before we put this back in its new resting place, take this opportunity to Go ahead and remove the lifting bolts. And 
and then go ahead and replace this back panel. All right, so what we have right here is these nylon set screws. And you can see right now the fence shifts a lot left to right. Obviously we don't want that, right? So we want to tighten these down till they're barely touching until they do touch. Okay, so that one's touching. That one's touching. Now I'm going to back off just about a quarter turn. And that was too much. So let's go ahead and tighten it up a little bit, tighten it up a little bit. All right, so now we just need to back off just a little bit. All right, so after a little bit of adjusting, looks like I have pretty smooth movement front and back. So we'll go ahead and leave it right there, but these are the two set screws that you use for that. All right, so when you get your machine, uh, your machine does not have any sort of plug on it. You have to put a plug on it, um, which is kind of nice because you can pick and choose what kind of plug you have based on your uh, setup. The plug that I will be using is this uh, NEMA 6-20P. It is a 20 amp rated plug and the breaker that this machine needs to be on is a 20 amp breaker. I know there's some uh, confusion. I was confused uh, as well saying it had to be on a 30 amp breaker, but there's built-in safety into the machine that will not exceed 20 amps. Therefore, you can use a 20 amp breaker. So we've got to put this plug on the wires. I'm not really going to talk too technical on the electrical portion. Uh, do what you're comfortable with. So I'm going to stick these in there. Tighten these down and realize that I'm an idiot because I didn't put the other part on the plug. Put in the positive and the negative. And then this yellow wire that you see that hasn't been inserted yet, it's yellow and green. That is the ground. And on these plugs, uh, which I got this plug at uh, Home Depot. They sell them, they're about 12 bucks. You'll see right here, it's got the green screw, that's your ground cable. All right, got my plug, good to go. Other thing I need to do is make sure this is the master power, the main power for the unit. I'm going to flip that on. I'm not gonna plug it in just yet. Let's go ahead and lower these beds back down. Last thing to add is the blade guard. And slide that on. Plug in the machine. And now for the part uh, that's a little nerve-wracking because this is going to tell us whether or not we did everything right. Did everything right. Very cool. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Uh, I really hope you guys found it helpful. There were some other things that I did want to include in this video, such as the in-feed and out-feed supports and how to go about assembling those. However, due to them being on back order, they were not here when it was time for me to do the video. And then also going about making sure and dialing in your fence to make sure that it's 90. Luckily, mine was on the A326. I did have to adjust it a little bit, uh, but I just really did not want to mess with the fence uh, in this video because it already came and it was good to go and it really didn't require any adjustments at all. When I filmed this video, I was not aware that Felder actually has an app that you can download to your phone and on that app actually has a lot of really good resources for anybody that's purchasing their machine. So I would definitely recommend going and checking that out. Just go to the app store, uh, type in Felder and that app should come up and there is some pretty good information inside of that app. Hopefully if you've watched this whole video, you found it useful. I know if you're waiting on a machine, uh, and you haven't actually received it yet, 
this video should be very helpful to you on any of the Hammer A3 line joiner planer combo models. I used both the 26 and now the 41 and the setup and installation was almost identical. One was just much lighter than the other. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave them down in the comments section down below. Good luck on the setup of your new machine. I uh, hope you enjoy it as much as I have, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.